The first text came in at noon. It was a slow day at work and nothing much was going on, so the sound of my phone receiving it was a welcome distraction from the mobile game I was already starting to get tired of. Instead of the, what's up text I was expecting from my buddy Jake, the number was an unfamiliar one. I opened it without much hesitation to find a picture of myself. What the hell? I said out loud to no one in particular as I looked closely at the photo from an unknown number. It was obvious that it was taken at night considering the only clear things not obscured in the darkness were a small line of people waiting in front of a set of doors. One of the people waiting in line had their face turned as if they were looking for something in the darkness. The quality of whatever phone camera it was shot with was complete shit so I couldn't make out any details except for the glowing sign above the doors that declared the place the ballroom in fluorescent blue light. I texted back the unknown number. Who's this? The number didn't respond to my query for the next 20 minutes as I sat waiting. Just as a delivery came in on my phone, it decided to ring with another incoming text message that I didn't have time to check. When the pizza was out of the oven and the delivery driver had finally left with the order, I was able to check the phone again to see another message from the unknown number. I expected to find an answer to the question I had sent earlier. Instead, what I found was another photo. This one looked like the inside of some type of club. It looked like any number of clubs I had been dragged to by Jake. Black lights, illuminating wrap around seating, with bright TV screens blaring the most annoying music you could think of while scanty clad girls carried drink trays filled with brightly colored drinks with little umbrellas and mint leaves sticking out of them. Just like the last photo, the quality was shit. It was obvious though that the center of the photo was supposed to be some person with brown hair and a black leather coat sitting on the wraparound. The unknown person had their head turned to the left and were leaning slightly as if they were trying to find someone in the crowd of the dance floor behind them. I think you have the wrong number. I texted the number in response to the photo. No response. I put my phone back in my pocket, expecting that to be the end of the curious photos. The next one came three hours later just as I was clocking out. As I pressed the enter key on the front computer, letting it know that I was done for the day, the phone in my pocket made another ding, as it was wont to do whenever it wanted my attention. I pulled the phone out again as I stepped out the front door of the pizza place and opened the screen. Another photo sent by the same number. I was preparing an angry response as I opened the text messenger to let this stranger know that I was going to block their number. That of course went completely out the window when I actually saw the photo. The quality was still shit, as most of the photo was a complete blur of black lighting and brightly colored rectangles of what I assumed to be televisions inside of the same place from the previous photo that had been taken. A place I assumed was called the ballroom, as that's what the first photo had shown. This photo showed the back of what I assumed to be the same person from earlier wearing a black leather jacket as he held the drink at his side. The figure in the photo looked like he was trying to navigate through a small crowd. What was different in this photo, however, was a hand sticking out from the bottom of the photo. Whoever had been holding the camera was sticking their hand out far enough ahead of them to show their hand as it hovered above the drink of Mr. Black Leather Jacket. While terrible quality it was, it was just good enough to show a white pill-shaped fuzz between the fingers of the camera holder hovering over the drink. I called the cops. They didn't seem to take it as seriously as I did. I mean, why weren't they going to do anything about someone getting drugged in a bar? I mean, I know the only thing they had to go on were photos I gave them from my phone and the phone number that I had sent the text, but shouldn't that be enough? They thanked me for giving them the information but sent me out of the station as quickly as they could. Just as I pulled up to my apartment two hours later, as the LA sun was starting to disappear behind the horizon, I got another text from the unknown number. This photo wasn't in the ballroom, like the last ones, but did show a familiar figure in a black leather jacket laying in the backseat of a car. His face was covered in some sort of black cloth, so I couldn't see a face or anything, but it was obvious by the general build and black leather that it was the same person from the previous pictures. 
I was about to call the cops again to tell them the phone number I had sent me what was obviously a picture of someone kidnapping a dude, but was interrupted when I almost tripped over a package sitting in front of my apartment. The package was from my sister in Sacramento. Apparently she had ordered it so it would be delivered by my birthday, and it just happened to be a day early, so I wasn't expecting it. Happy birthday, big bro. You always talked about how much you wanted one of these when we were kids. Now you finally have your own Fonzie jacket. The piece of paper with the order information said in a note section. It was a black leather jacket, almost identical to the ones in the photo that had been sent to me all day. Before I could even think about what to do with it, my phone dinged again. Another photo. This one showed Mr. Black Leather Jacket laying in my bed, complete with the familiar configuration of pillows and blankets I could see currently as the package from my sister lay on it. The black cloth that had been previously obscuring my face was now off, and my fear since I had seen the black leather jacket come out of the delivery box came true as I saw my face on top of that passed out body on the bed. As I stared in disbelief at the photo, another one came in. This one was a close-up of my wrist, the black sleeve of the pierced black leather jacket just visible at the edge, as the camera holder's right hand was pressing a knife into my wrist. I desperately tried to type a response, but was too slow as the next picture came in before I could send it. This one was a pulled back photo, showing me laying on the bed in complete repose. The quality of this photo was much better than the others, as it clearly showed a large cut down my wrist and the blood staining the sheets of my bed in large pools. The bloody knife lay on the bed next to my open left hand as it had fallen out just a moment before. As I stared at the photo, too frightened to do anything but stare at my own dead body, another text came in. This one hadn't come from an unfamiliar number, but was from my buddy Jake. Hey dude, wanna head out tonight for an early B-Day celebration? Just heard about this place called The Ballroom. Supposed to be super sweet. 